Alright, so the next geometry that I want to um, work with is uh, this is an actual product I did back in about 2001 or 2002 so this model was built with an older version of Pro Engineer so when you dig through it you can kind of see that there were some change you know different differences uh, it's a hair comb this is the the teasing comb and this is the af afro pick so it's kind of neat how we combine two 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 functions in one comb you know This, if you if you resume all the features in this product that I'm downloading here and, and, and uh, look at it, this is a really interesting pattern here. Got a lot to play with if you have the student version of Pro Engineer and you want to play with it some. So the the challenge here is to is to notice how I use this patchwork process to clean up this geometry. Okay, I'm gonna just delete this little spot here and uh, rebuild it, okay? So what happened here is I needed a large round here and a small round here, but the darn round wouldn't let me get across this crease. So I'm gonna color some of the different, different colors here. I like to use sort of different color yellows and greens. Okay, different, different colors now. If you look at the yellow, this is co-injected rubber, and this green is like the hard, the hard nylon, if you will. Um, and what I need to do is, 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 and, and the round, uh, rounds are a lot more forgiving nowadays in Pro Engineer. You can do some pretty crazy stuff, but at this time, in uh, 2001, when this comb was modeled with that version of the software that called 2001 Pro Engineer the round wouldn't go across this boundary. So in this case, I'm just gonna build it up with a surface patch and I'm gonna do it a couple different ways so you can see how it works. All right, same thing that we already know. Shift, control, shift. I kinda look at how the control points look and I'm, I'd like to be able to do piece to piece if it'll let me. Especially if I can get the top of this radius to go to the top of that radius. Let's get the second direction curves to, to work. Control, shift, that's a non-tangent area right here and it lets me build that. That's one of the reasons the round wouldn't work. So I'll force tangency everywhere. Oh, tangency's confused. Pro Engineer again flipping a quarter to, to obtain this rate and it's going tangent to the wrong face. Oops, up here, there, and here. So the preview lets me know that tangency works. Um, one, two, three. Let's force tangency at the top now. I think we're going to be lucky and none of these tangencies are going to work. Our quarter flipping process tangent doesn't work on any of them. Okay. So there's my surface patch. If you'll notice I get a little wiggle at the top here. Yeah. Okay. I just want you to be uber observant as you go and develop these geometries. Let's turn off all those curves. I need to kind of see through the quagmire here a little better. Okay, if you'll notice too, I got to dial in my control points to get piece to piece everywhere. All right, well, I don't know if I want this curve to line up to that curve. I, I think I want two separate ones, so I might need to rethink what I did with piece to piece in this case. Control points. I'm just going to go natural here. And in the second direction, let's, let's see, I'm sorry, the first direction, let's get, no, notice there's, there's green here, green here, green here. That doesn't mean I can't access the top of that radius to the bottom, top of that radius, the bottom radius to the bottom radius. I call that striation. I'm lining up the flow of the geometry. I still get a little bit of a wiggle here. All right, for most people, that's good enough. I'm going to take and solidify that geometry in one way or another and ultimately layer off or hide the surface that I just built. Good enough. Let's build that slightly a different way. All right, so this surface here is an arc with draft. It's been arced 
with draft. So if I do a draft check, you'd see one degree draft. Not the easiest scenario. I can't do a flat filled surface there. Let's resolve it a number of different ways. I like to get my sketchbook out and draw different ways that I can solve this geometry. I'll force this one tangent up here and we'll just go tangent to the surface here. Do you see how the curve buckles outward? That's really annoying. I'd like to be able to tweak how it dives in at the bottom. Got any resolve for that? Each time I try to squash a bug, I get a new problem to solve. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to insert mode just before the curve right after the point, and I'm going to build a little handle on the bottom here so I can parametrically control the, the, the curve that I just went into insert before, curve two there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a datum plane through that point parallel to one of these other datum planes. Okay, see the datum plane? I ought to change it so it's in a close proximity. Remember, I like to pretend like I'm a team player so that engineers that don't know anything about surfacing don't complain too much because they'll certainly complain that you made it so complicated they can't modify it. I hear that almost every time. It's a simple little trick here. So let's uh, let's now use that tool to sketch a a line on here. You see how I've got a? I'm just going to put it at an angle so I can change it to whatever I want, and I'm just going to align that point on there, and I'm going to dimension it in the old way I prefer. I kind of like to sketch a handle on here like that and ultimately turn that into construction geometry and I dimension all these the same way with an angle. My experience at Design Engine was really positive. Um, this was uh, close to home for me. I grew up in the Chicago area so it was nice to come back. Uh, it was nice with the downtown setting uh, very easy to get to, you know, from train, whatever, and if you were in a hotel, probably even easier. So overall, uh, the experience was great. Uh, great staff here, and I was engaged the whole time. Uh, and unlike some of the other CAD courses I've taken, where you're sitting, you got a whole classroom sitting there nodding off. This was a complete 180 from what I've experienced in the past. Uh, during this class, I basically focused on uh, Pro E, Creo surfacing of one week intensive course and it was I came to surfacing maybe six months ago before that it was a lot of sheet metal totally different program also I was running Katia now I'm in Creo um, so every, almost everything I learned here was was refreshing because I'd be sitting at my desk just struggling before this now I have a plan of attack and that was the biggest thing I think I learned here was you have a plan of attack the second you open the screen I found uh, Benny's lessons very helpful, um, running through the tutorials. Um, I've done the PTC tutorials before, I've done the PTC classes, and it still was nothing like what we did here. They were drawing on their past experiences, um, and the class was, they geared the class more towards, this is generally how you do things, as opposed to, here's an example, click these buttons. Yeah, during the class, if I did get stuck up somewhere, you know, just raise your hand or, you know, wait, let them run through the uh, rest of the exercise. And they were always walking around more and willing to come back and check up on you. They always made sure they checked up on you. It was up to us whatever we wanted to do. So if we had any questions that we get to see every day or if we had models that we had trouble with, uh, there was an opportunity to you know, pick the instructor's brain and there's actually some guys still in there doing that. So I would highly recommend Design Engine to uh, any friends or colleagues. Actually, I'm going to be doing that when I go back uh, to work on Monday. And the biggest reason why is it's not sitting there clicking buttons or running through a tutorial in a book. Uh, it's a lot more open format and you get the concepts behind your, what you're doing, not just how to go about doing these things in this certain situation. They lay a good foundation for what you, you're going to encounter at work every day. Now when I double click on the, the projection curve, the, notice the dimension doesn't pop up. Okay, So let me delete all that that I did and build it a way that I can leave a better breadcrumb trail behind 
so if we get a smart engineer behind me, they don't have to get me on the phone to help them modify what I, I and you consider to be a simple little trick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a bunch of stuff on the fly. I'm going to build this projection tool, and instead of projecting a chain, I'm going to project a sketch. This is my sketch plane. I don't have a sketch, so i got to define the sketch, but I'm going to define the sketch on this sketch tool thing here. Same thing now. Model myself a little handle, put myself a little angle. I'm going to uh, left click on, on the straight, the orthogonal curve and turn it to a uh, construction geometry. Okay, check out of that. Now I'm still in the projection function, see? What surface do you want to project to with respect to what? <laughs> this is the part SOLIDWORKS doesn't have. Now when I double click on the curve, all the dimensions pop up. So it's, it, it's a little bit better team player game what I just showed you. You can open that up and see all the stuff inside it. All right, now let's get this curve back, edit definition on the curve, and instead of going tangent to the surface, let's go tangent to the curve itself. Now I've got a parametric wrap, a parametric geometry that I can kind of Not many people think to do stuff like that. They're just happy to get it tangent and they're done with it. You see how now it's all writing below the geometry? A little bit more of an interesting shape that we're gonna unveil. Let's build a boundary blend now. Left click, shift, control, shift, right hold down, second direction, left click, shift, control, shift. Okay. Force tangency everywhere. You better get fast at this. You'd think Pro E would remember what I go tangent to when it flips that quarter. Second direction tangency. It's force tangency at the top. All right, so this is the same way I built it before, but now I get access to that curve. Let's edit definition and add that curve as an internal curve. This direction, internal curve. Let's see how this curve's flipping out a little bit. Let's uh, soften that inner edge tangency up. Very different way to build that shape. It may or may not be the shape you want, but it's a fourth try that we've built. Notice that I've got a segment here and a segment here, and here I've just got one segment. So maybe that helps you come up with even a fifth option to model that form.